The banking landscape is drastically changing with multiple forces attacking the bank. Today, I'm going to talk to you about how Oracle's open banking platform can help legacy banks transform and become the digital bank of the future. Hi everyone, I'm Sanjay Matthew, Senior Director within our Financial Services Industry Group. So let's examine what are some of the forces that are happening that banks today are experiencing. Today, banks and FSIs are envisioning a new platform to keep up with some of these forces that I talked about. Let's elaborate that. So first force is customer expectations are changing drastically, forcing banks to deliver new innovations. Second, the regulatory oversight landscape is changing, forcing new innovations through programs such as PSD2, which is rising new business models. Third, fintech challengers and big tech are transforming the industry and play by totally new rules. So big techs are the GAFA in the West, and the BATAs in the East. The GAFAs, the Google, the Amazons, the Facebook, and in the East are the Baidu, the Tencent, and the Alipay. And lastly, changing landscapes such as AI, machine learning, and blockchain are driving drastically new business models. All of these things require a dr um, drastic rethinking of the platform of the future. So let's take a look at one of the largest banks in the United States. This slide here talks about all of the services that the bank provides and overlays services that are provided by the fintechs. So the conclusion here is that almost every service that's offered by a bank today is available by a fintech. So this is a force that you cannot uh, ignore. And we've done a study of this with the Rubini study. And what we've concluded is almost all of the banks are either partnering, acquiring, or licensing. Very few banks today are building digital innovations in-house. So the race for tomorrow's banking is all about aggregation and bringing fintechs together on a full-blown platform and integrating with them. Let's also examine a new trend. This is the evolution of banks from closed systems to open systems. On the left-hand side, you see a typical traditional bank, which is closed, where the bank's monolithic system provides all of the products and is directly connected to its customers. On the right-hand side is the new bank, uh, which is basically the open bank, which the bank is not only connected to its customers just through its direct relationships, but it's also connected to a variety of industry participants, such as telcos, utilities, payment providers, and other aggregators. This is because a bank today cannot afford to make any decisions purely by the data that it aggregates on its own, but by data that's coming from other sources. This is emulating, um, for example, in the East, systems such as WeChat, which provides complete services on a platform, banking, payments, all of the other services, which you call everyday life services. The only way banks can emulate something like that is to move towards an ecosystem bank like this. Now let's look at the future of banking. This is Chris Kinner, who talks about what the future of banking is. So the future of banking is basically banking or banks opening up all its APIs out, its, its backplane out, where all of these things can connect to a backplane of external services, such as payments, lending, mortgages, onboarding, KYC. These are not manufactured by the bank, but these are created by the fintechs, the, the raft of fintechs that are coming in. And this is really a threat for existing banks today because new banks or challenger banks out there can rapidly build a universal bank by just simply becoming an aggregator. So banks need to completely rethink the way they're going to market and the way they've designed their current systems together uh, today to compete with this force. Here's Yolanda Piazza, the CEO of City Fintech. She talks about open banking being a key part of their strategy to pursuing life partner vision, which is basically key to their national digital banking rollout. Right? So they talk about open banking being fundamental to be able to, to complete that vision. So what is open banking? Open banking enables third parties to safely and securely access current accounts with customer consent, either for the purpose of gathering transaction data or initiating payments on customers' behalf through an open API. Now this is largely mandated by European banks uh, through regulations such as PSD2 and uh, CMA. However, open banking all over the world, with regulation or without regulation, has morphed into new business models, which we will examine shortly. 
Um, open banking, uh, the term, while it came from a regulatory paradigm in Europe, is all over the world. There's high levels of adoption. This study here by Accenture talks about by 2018, almost 61% of banks would have started adopting open banking. And then by 2019, the, the laggards would. So here we examine business models from open banking. And so the key point here is it's not just about compliance that's coming from Europe. It's about the evolution of banking into new business models. So on the left-hand side, you see the traditional bank, which is the monolithic bank. The bank manufactures everything, and the bank distributes it. It's, it's in control of the entire stack from manufacturing to distribution. It comes with high cost. It's also slow and sluggish. Platform banking, which is in the middle, is basically the bank primarily assumes the manufacturing position and it gives out the position of distribution to third parties. So if third parties are good at distributing or they have a better consumer experience, basically third parties basically can aggregate those services. And the last one is the distributor model where the bank becomes an aggregator. It does manufacture some of its products, but it's basically called marketplace banking where, or ecosystem banking that we talked about before, where it's connected to a whole host of partners. So think about a bank offering insurance when it doesn't have insurance services. It aggregates it, it provides it to its customer seamlessly, thus becoming a universal bank. So uh, let's examine some of the issues um, in moving to platform banking. Um, Oracle has been talking to a lot of fintechs as well as a lot of banks. And what we find is uh, many of the fintechs, while they provide great solutions, like the ones shown here, imagine there's three fintechs here on different cloud solutions, some covering lending, some covering payments and mortgages. All of these fintechs do connect with the bank. They run innovation workshops, they run POCs. The issue is once they're done with their cycles and then they try to connect with the bank, we find that it's time consuming, it's costly, and the time to monetization is typically 12 to 18 months. And that is a problem that Oracle's focused to solving in terms of how to build an enterprise scale ecosystem connected to fintechs, as well as other industry partners such as uh, telcos, e-commerce vendors, utility services. So let us look at the Oracle's open banking platform, it comprises of six ideas here. One is it's based on an API banking platform. It's built on a full enterprise scale API backbone, which allows anyone to connect to any fintech using APIs. You're allowed to manage it, you're allowed to design it, you're allowed to meter it and monitor all of those APIs. So foundational is, is the API backbone. The second is Oracle has a marketplace, I'll talk to you about it, where we aggregate the world's best fintechs, which allows these fintechs to connect back into the core. A third point is basically Oracle's working with a number of banks to expose their services such as utilities, APIs on our marketplace. So think of banks which are good at payments or KYC um, or card management, they can expose their APIs on our marketplace. The fourth idea is basically the entire stack is available as a sandbox. This is primarily very important for banks who are working with fintechs at scale. If they have an innovation lab, we offer our sandbox for banks and fintechs to be able to do this experimentation. The fifth point is Oracle's distribution allows these fintechs to connect to the banks, as well as the banks to connect to our own customers, which brings us to our last point, which is our customers are your customers. Oracle has close to a half a million enterprise customers. Banks today want to connect to our customers um, to offer them, let's say, better treasury services, better payment services. A lot of these are connected at the back end of an ERP. Oracle's open banking platform allows these banks to connect to our ERP customers to offer seamless experience, uh, and thus allowing these banks to also grow their business. Um, now let's look at the platform overall. There are seven layers here. If you start at the layer, which is basically what the bank today offers, it's the core banking layer. So this is your legacy core. It is as is. Very few of them are modernizing it. Many of them are on the race to try to connect to these fintechs through APIs or external services. So one is Oracle offers a bank API connectivity kit, which is basically close to a thousand plus APIs that allow the bank to expose these legacy systems and then connect to the modern world to external fintechs. 
product, Oracle has a complete CX stack, which comprises of sales, service, and marketing, customer 360. All of these services are also available as APIs on this platform. What is unique to Oracle is Oracle's FinTech program, where we bring in some of the best FinTechs. All of these things are shown in yellow, mostly illustrative. So we cover FinTechs which run on the stack, run on Oracle. Some are provided as APIs, some actually running on Oracle Native Cloud. Uh, we provide direct desk services, we provide payments, we provide biometrics, credit scoring, e-commerce, uh, hyper-personalization, aggregation services, all of these things delivered to a single shop from Oracle. Um, what is important then is as these APIs are available, from an innovation perspective, you need to be able to wire these things together. So you definitely need developer tools, you need integration tools, you need identity management, you need the ability to do containers, you may need a blockchain component. So Oracle packages all of these components which are st available on the stack. And on the top of the house basically is our marketplace layer, which allows you to explore and review all of these fintechs that we have available. All of the APIs are exposed. Anyone can come into our marketplace, uh, explore any of the APIs from Oracle or from the fintechs and start building innovations. And lastly, at the bottom of the stack is our infrastructure as a service, which allows any of our banks to do this innovation on-prem through our cloud machine services or on a public cloud service. So offer, Oracle is one of the only players to offer an open banking platform um, on the public cloud or behind a, a firewall with all of these services, not just an API layer. Uh, let's examine the API com uh, components. Oracle has a complete API lifecycle management service from design to management. From a design perspective, Oracle acquired Apiary, and then from a management perspective, Oracle's API management cloud services is integrated into it, which allows anyone to basically completely design an API, manage it, meter it, monitor it, scale it, all of those components coming together under one single platform, which is the API platform cloud service, which is one of the components which I've shown in the stack before. Now let's look at the APIs, drill down into it. So this is the breadth of APIs that Oracle has. We have APIs from our CX platform. We have APIs that a bank can expose if they want to, to build a marketplace. Oracle has its own API kit, which allows a bank to expose its APIs. We have blockchain APIs, PaaS, IaaS APIs, ERP APIs, which allows you to connect to, let's say, a NetSuite or to an ERP cloud. And lastly, a huge portfolio of fintechs and all of their APIs available. So Oracle's exposed all of these APIs on a single stack with a, uh, the, the set of platform tools, which allows anyone to start building a whole set of new digital innovations. Um, a quick note, Oracle's open banking stack also includes Oracle blockchain cloud service. So if you think about open banking, open banking is all about connecting different parties. It's the bank to its customers, to its partners. Uh, we believe blockchain is extremely important to be able to manage uh, the communication, to be able to secure it, and to be able to work with these third parties. That's why we've embedded Oracle's blockchain cloud service into Oracle Open Banking, and it's available as APIs to be able to connect uh, these, this heterogeneous ecosystem. Let's take a look at our fintech marketplace. Oracle's fintech scale-up program brings in the world's best fintechs. So we have fintechs which cover blockchain, not only our blockchain, but other blockchain services. We have payments, biometrics, we have credit scoring, AI-based credit scoring fintechs, fraud, AML, KYC, wealth tech, portfolio management, onboarding services, SMB lending, banking API kits, market data feeds, robos, card management, MIFD2, and GDPR. So these are just some of a few services that we have um, that I've shown on the slide today. Oracle's constantly expanding its portfolio of fintechs that's available on the stack. Now, I talked a few minutes ago about this digital sandbox. This is what the digital sandbox looks like. It comes with a pre-built marketplace, an API marketplace with fintech APIs. We've got plug-and-play fintechs available on the stack. We have a whole set of developer tools, including AI, machine learning, blockchain, bots, API management, Java, database, big data analytics, all available on the stack, which you may choose to use. It's backed by cloud infrastructure with extreme compute available on the public cloud or on a cloud machine. 
a banking API layer, which basically comprises of close to 1,000 plus APIs, which allows the bank to expose its APIs on a marketplace. And lastly, embedded CX, which comes from our CX portfolio. So this digital sandbox um, is something that you would use within your innovation lab to accelerate and drive innovation as you start working with fintechs or you start really building your own digital applications. Um, it's not just our infrastructure and our paths, but we pack in the world's best ingredients coming from the fintechs alone to create one digital palette from where you can start uh, building your innovations. So how Oracle changes the innovate to monetization game? We talked about monetization taking too long earlier as being one of the issues. So what you would do is when you would want to work with this fintech, you would take one of our digital sandboxes, you would expose your APIs from the bank side on this sandbox. That's called the virtual API bank. Your fintechs would be hosted on the sandbox. And once you're done with the experimentation, we have an identical copy of production where all of the APIs from your bank are exposed. We can literally marry your innovation sandbox into your backend core banking to drive the integration. So this allows you to, once you're finished with your innovation cycles, seamlessly marry all of the fintech and new digital innovations into your backend core, into your production core, which could be even be on uh, old and monolithic systems such as mainframe and things like that. So let me summarize from a key differentiator perspective, Oracle's open banking stack comprises of an enterprise grade cloud platform. It's not just an API layer. It comprises of a lot more that as I've talked about before. We have curated fintechs and a comprehensive CX platform, which is running on Oracle native cloud. We can accelerate innovation with open banking sandboxes with embedded fintechs. You have the choice to deploy this on a public cloud or behind the firewall. Embedded in it is an app dev and a comprehensive DevOps platform and a comprehensive API management stack with OR 2.0, which is important to manage security and communication with these fintechs, which could be running on any different cloud on any different system. Lastly, let me finish off with the benefits for the bank with adopting Oracle's open banking platform. One is you can monetize with the fintech faster, so you can compress the time from 18 months to I would say a couple of months. Second, you can accelerate your innovation with our sandbox. Third, you can rapidly deploy new services. So for example, adding new services such as insurance or new services that you don't offer today, you can actually become a universal bank um, by connecting to other services that may not be yours but become a distributor. You can operate efficiently and monetize your existing services. So for example, if you have services that you have that you want to monetize externally, or you want to consume from others, you can do that through our marketplace. You can grow your customer base by connecting to our own customers, which I mentioned, ERPs, NetSuite, eBusiness Suite, and others. And then lastly, one of the biggest things is mitigating the adoption of fintech risk. Oracle's program curates the world's best fintechs. We run them on the Oracle stack. Um, we've done all, most of the due diligence to bring it to you to allow you to basically consume these fintechs with confidence. In closing, Oracle's digital innovation platform for open banking delivers best-in-class Oracle and fintech innovations curated on a secure, scalable, enterprise-grade, one-stop shop open banking innovation platform made accessible by just a single line of API code. For more information, go to cloud.oracle.com slash financial services. Thank you.